take a deep breath in. And on the outward breath, allow your eyelids to close. That's in. And as you breathe in, just imagine that you're breathing in a resourceful feeling of relaxation. And as you exhale, just get a sense that stress, tension, worries are just leaving your body in your outward breath. Breathing in that resourceful feeling of relaxation. And as you exhale, just giving permission to yourself to let go of all of that tension and stress you've been holding on to, enabling you to go deeper and deeper, relaxed now. I want you to notice that the muscles in your forehead, as you breathe in and breathe out, start to just release that tension. Muscles in the jaw, as you breathe in through your nostrils, just notice that it becomes more and more effortless. The breathing gets deeper. And as you breathe deeper, you're breathing more of that resourceful relaxation in and enabling you to let go of more and more of that tension, stress and worries. I want you to get a sense that stress is just the relationship between resources and demands. And I want you to get a sense that resources aren't just your intelligence and your skills and your capabilities, but time is a resource and money is a resource. And therefore, one of the easiest ways to increase the amount of stress in your life is to make poor decisions with your time and to make poor decisions with your money. Because if time and money are a resource and you can fritter away that time and money doesn't it make sense that you have less resources to cope with those demands I want you to get a sense that a recipe for more stress and overwhelm in your life is to take on more demands to say yes to more projects to agree to more things and to make awful decisions with your time and your money and maybe as you think back there's been times in your life where you've done that and wasn't that the time where you were more stressed but I want you to accept that something else is also true that if a way of increasing stress is to reduce resources and increase demands, then doesn't it make sense that the opposite is also true? That the better choices you make with your time and your money means the more resources that you have. And the less demands, particularly those demands that aren't important to you, Every time you say no to something that is of low importance means that you're reducing the demands that you need to give your attention to and that will reduce the stress in your life. And what if, with the time that you save, you're able to allocate that to something that would reward your future self? To give a gift to a future self because if you could give a gift to your future self and that gift was a high paying job with status but lots of stress and lots of insecurity or you could give a gift to your future self where you were the master of your own destiny You have a business that you've built up that's having a positive impact on the world. And therefore, you have that creative control. You have the security of being 
the owner of your own business, what gift would you prefer to give your future self? And if you'd prefer to give yourself a stressful but high status job, let me know by nodding your head. But if you'd prefer to give your future self a business that enables you to have the lifestyle and freedom that you want, but more importantly, creative control and a positive impact on the world, let me know by nodding your head. And therefore, anything that gets in the way of giving your future self that gift means that you're stealing from your future self. You're stealing the resources to make it possible. You're stealing the motivation and the self-belief that you can even do it. I want you to imagine that you are in a place that you know well. I want you to imagine a luxurious restaurant with amazing views. And when you're in that place, let me know by nodding your head. I want you to imagine that you have in savings several million. Just accept that to be true. And then imagine that you're given an unexpected bill or debt or fine for a large amount. I want you to get a sense that The financial resources that you have mean that even if this outcome is undesirable, this debt, this bill, this fine, it isn't a cause of the same level of stress as if you didn't have those financial resources, which then gives evidence. It gives evidence to your mind that money is a resource, just like oxygen is a resource. People don't worry about oxygen while it's there. But if you were in some kind of sealed submarine far under the surface of the water, how important is oxygen when oxygen is running out? How important is time if you have days to live? And how important is money when money isn't there? I want you to get a sense that you are discerning in many different areas of your life. Particularly when it comes to lifestyle, you're able to choose nice restaurants choose good destinations and I wonder what if your ability to be discerning with your lifestyle gives you a unique ability to be discerning with how you spend your money in many cases people make lifestyle decisions based on how will it make them feel And I want you to start thinking about money in the same way. I want you to ask yourself the question, will this give me a sense of real joy or just gratification? And therefore, isn't it possible that you're able to perceive gratification as counterfeit joy. I want you to get a sense that wouldn't it feel weird if you were wearing counterfeit jewellery and pretending it was real jewellery? Fake fashion when the real thing exists. I want you to get a sense that A real holiday is a real holiday, whereas watching a holiday destination on TV is not the same thing. Your unconscious mind is now willing to perceive 
temporary gratification as counterfeit joy and therefore not the same, not real. How much of a difference would it make to your life if all that money you saved on counterfeit joy could be used to give you two more important things? A vehicle towards freedom or genuine, joyful moments. If your unconscious mind is willing to accept that gratification and real happiness are not the same thing, let me know by nodding your head. I want you to get a sense that what is life if it isn't a series of consequences of decisions. I want you to get a sense that any financial stress that you've experienced recently isn't that partly down to a cause and effect relationship with previous decisions that you've meant with how you've spent money. And I want you to imagine that you've got a time machine and you go back two or three years. I want you to imagine that you're now back in that body of you two or three years ago, but with this new belief system that you're going to invest what you did spend on gratification into things that facilitate either freedom or true happiness. And if you're willing to go on this journey with me, let me know by nodding your head. Find yourself where you were perhaps three years ago, back in your body. With this new discerning way of thinking, imagine you're living your life, but maybe that coffee that you would get, or maybe that restaurant, or maybe that takeaway, or maybe something else that you knew was very temporary in nature. What if you decided that anything that just represents gratification, you would, in a very discerning way, just choose to spend that money in a different area. Perhaps in taking your business life so that you could launch your business quicker or those things that would give you genuine happiness. And what is more important, gratification or peace of mind, Gratification or feelings of security. Gratification or feeling proud of what you're building. You can speed up time in your imagination. Imagine going through those days, those weeks, time after time, choosing to make different decisions. And I wonder how much money you would save just by... Choosing not to fritter money away and instead build a war chest to build a business. To pay down expensive debts, giving you more peace of mind, which actually means you sleep better, feel better. And as you do that, I want you to get a sense that aren't you more in control of your life? By the way, that doesn't mean that you deprive yourself of joy because if you define something, it could be an ice cream on a beach. It could be a cup of coffee with a friend. But if those things you deem to be important, meaningful moments, then that isn't frittering it away. Get the balance just right where you save a lot of money by not wasting it on those fleeting moments and instead assign it onto building something important and significant for you. Allow the days to turn into weeks, weeks to turn into months and months to turn into years and then bring yourself all the way up to the present and realize that had that have happened for the last three years, just evaluate how your current circumstances would be different. 
Would there be less stress in your life? Would you have more options and choices? And then I want you to think forward into the future. I want you to entertain two different futures. One future where you prioritize lifestyle. And the second where you prioritize freedom and impact on the world. I want you to imagine in that first future, anything that impedes on the quality of your life or perceived quality on your life is rejected, even if it slows down your ability to launch a business, even if it creates more stress. I want you to be flashy, have the nice apartment, go on those nice holidays, wear the nice dresses. And it feels good in the moment, but perhaps does it feel good when you think back to that moment? Imagine five years of living that way and realizing that in five years' time you're still in debt. You've made little progress on your business. I want you to get a sense then. Did this help or hinder you living your best life and having the impact on the world that you wanted? And then entertain a different future. A future where you're willing to make short-term sacrifices for long-term freedom, for long-term sense of pride and satisfaction for a long-term impact on the world. And most people successful in business think back to those times that they make those sacrifices. The entrepreneur that started out, not in the flashy office, but in their spare room or their garage... millionaire or billionaire that remembers just getting by on the basics while they were building their empire they don't feel like they missed out they feel like they invested in themselves they think back to those days of not having money as them at their most motivated their most hungry for success it didn't impede their success It facilitated it. It amplified it. It made them at their most resourceful. I want you to entertain those two futures and just decide. Who are you at your core? Who do you want to be? And when you think back at your life, at the end of your life... Do you want to be someone that built something? Do you want to be someone that was in control of your own destiny? Or someone that had to compromise on their values just to stay afloat? To firefight? To always be a few weeks away from losing it all? And when you make that decision of who you want to be, let me know by nodding your head. But more importantly, reconcile that not only are you comfortable with making sacrifices to create and build something important, but the sacrifices don't even feel like real sacrifices. They feel like delayed gratification that whatever you're depriving yourself of right now is a gift to your future self with interest that whatever you miss out on now you will get back tenfold in the future and have the freedom and have all of the significance and pride that comes from building something important and if you're willing to make Make that compromise, make that sacrifice, 
but perceive it to be an investment in your future self, just let me know by nodding your head. That's it. Now it's time to return to the present. But update these beliefs, these priorities, these new values. Make a decision then. Frittering away on short-term gratification isn't harmless. You're harming your future self. And I want you to realize that what you've done for your child is what you can be doing for you. Short-term sacrifices for an investment in your future. If it's good enough for your child, it's good enough for you. You deserve it. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And out through your nose. Just wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Get a sense that all parts of you are integrated, aligned, and on board with this new way of thinking as I count from 1 to 10 to awaken you starting to count 1, 2, 3, waking up 4, 5, 6, more alert 7, 8 open your eyes, open your eyes 9, 10, wide awake wide awake wide awake